what's the difference between a bit torrent and central location? So I like to go through a few bits. We're trying to contextualize the movie a little bit and maybe what you know your piracy means or your unauthorized uses mean. Um, so what's the difference between a bit torrent and a central location? What is a central location? So I'll give you an example. Napster, if you ever heard of that website um, or service, was, was a place where you could go and download music. Now, I'll date myself. I already said I'm about to be 40 uh, or am 40 today. Um, well, not today, but today when you're watching this. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I remember when Napster first came out. I was in college and I still listen to tapes and records, which I still basically only do. But I, my mind was blown that I could just go onto this website and I could enter in a song name, artist name, whatever, and press enter and like something I would probably be able to download. It. Napster was the, you know, the first unauthorized music distribution you know, place where basically users uploaded music and it, so other users could download it. There's a huge amassment of, of non-industry produced content, well, pr industry produced content, but it was an aggregate not produced by the industry. It was produced by people who put it together, passionate people. And so um, the thing, though, with, with Napster was this, is when you, uh, when you uploaded new music there, it went to Napster servers. When I went to download the song, it came from the Napster server. They had one, you know, one server, whatever, a server. It was a central location where content got uploaded to and was downloaded from. A BitTorrent is a little bit different. When you uh, go to Pirate Bay or wherever you go, Kick-Ass Torrents, which I don't think is around, but when you go and you torrent something, you download a torrent fi file, and then you use something, like I use Transmission, um, and so uh, what that does, what transmission does, is after you've downloaded the, the, the torrent file, the transmission basically does this. The torrent file doesn't actually, it's not the movie, it's not the music, it's not the book, not the video game, not the software. What it does is a file that looks at the peer network and it pulls bits of code from all of the people in that network who have that album or song, or movie, or video game, or whatever it is. It pulls bits of code from each person. And then what that does is on the back end is it assembles it all into a movie. So it's pulling from all of the peers in, in the network, okay? So someone uploads a torrent file to the Pirate Bay. Pirate Bay doesn't actually upload stuff. They claim they're a contact service. They're like a web forum where people, you know, upload torrent files, right? And then basically whoever has that music or whatever it is, is seeding. And seeding means like, this is pretty rudimentary description, but you know, you'll get, you'll get what it is. And all, you can see this image, you know, it's just whoever's downloading, you're just pulling, everybody's pulling bits of information from one another for that particular movie or whatever, music or whatever, and then it's being reassembled on, on, the, back, on the back end, which is very different. And it's important to know what that is. And it's one of the reasons why it's really hard to shut down peer-to-peer -peer, uh, networks because they often use BitTorrents, which there is no, you can't just raid uh, the, tor uh, the, the Pirate Bay or you can't raid a torrent site and just go in and take their servers and it's over like they did with Napster. You know, um, they've tried to do that, tried to shut down Pirate Bay a bunch. Okay, infringement. So you can be charged both civilly, which means Judge Judy for money type court, civil court, and you can also go to jail, criminal charges, which are very rare, but you can, okay? You've probably seen this crazy FBI warning when you've watched the movie. I think they've kind of toned down on that a little bit. But, you know, just want to let you know the FBI is watching. Okay. But you can be sued for up to $150,000 per infringement, per song that you download unauthorized, per movie that's an unauthorized download. Okay. Now, like Kendrick says, there's levels to this shit, right? So there's different types of infringers. The first is innocent. You didn't know. You didn't know it was wrong. You had no idea. Graham Graham, 
oh wow, I can, I can get this, you know, old jazz classic, and press the button, and just doesn't know. She's like, it's so cool, or you know, whatever, you know. And Graham gets like caught, you know, or whatever, gets flagged or something, you know. She'd be an innocent infringer. She doesn't know, really. And she doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know it's wrong or whatever. Probably blame her grandkid uh, for showing her how to use, you know, the Pirate Bay or whatever. The next level is what's called ordinary. Y'all are probably ordinary infringers. Y'all been probably told for a long time in school and stuff about copyright, at least like a little bit, you know, like you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, you know, uh, download this. You shouldn't torrent you shouldn't do this especially on mom and dad's computer because we're going to get the notice from comcast and they're going to shut down our cable and our internet and dad's going to be pissed as hell or or whatever order ordinary infringement means you kind of know that it's wrong but like you don't know how wrong it is like but you know it's wrong i mean probably for for y'all like you know you know like maybe it's not right or not legal, or at least not authorized. But you don't, you know, it is whatever, and it's pretty innocent, right? Oh, a couple hundred movies, a couple hundred albums, not making any money off of it. Probably would only buy, if you had to, like 5 to 10% of that content. Most of it's just to hear it, to watch it once, and then you're over it. You wouldn't buy the Blu-ray, right? You just want to see the new Star Wars, and you're just like, all right, cool, I saw that piece of shit. I don't need it, you know. Um, you know, it was only in theaters for two, two weeks, or whatever, a month, you know. The next level, which is the worst level, is a willful. This means that you're trying to make dough off of it. You're sneaking into movies and you're, make, you know, you're filming it and selling copies early. Like, you're, you're hawking pirated um, goods. You're trying to make dough off of it. That's willful. So, for Graham, she could get, like, $200 fine per infringement. Again, it depends. You may get like 10 grand per infringement or up to 150 grand. Uh, someone who's a willful infringer could get 150 grand to 250K. Uh, it really kind of just depends um, on how bad you're infringing. It's so rare to have criminal infringers. It would have to be like a big torrent site or something like that um, for you to for the on that level and technically it's really only illegal for you to offer things for upload downloading not as much but if you're seeding stuff you're offering stuff um, you're basically offering upload you're you're in uh you're uh enabling infringement so to speak and so that's where you run into a little bit of trouble okay now i told you earlier in the term but wink hit nudge this will be on this test there's a difference between the types of damages you can get um, if you're a plaintiff, meaning you've been infringed upon. So here's, a, here's an example. I make a super dope trap mixtape, mix right? And uh, I do not register my copyright on it. It's all my like original trap beats, right? Which I don't make trap beats. I make sleepy hip hop beats. Um, but um, you know, in this instance, I'm like, I'm gonna make some trap beats. And I'm putting on a mixtape. I sell a mixtape for 10 bucks. You make 10 copies of it and you sell 10 copies of that on the street, okay? Again, mind you, I did not register my copyright. I just have a, a regular copyright on it because it's original, fixed in a medium, um, and creative. And I catch you, you know, hawking my mixtape. I'm, I'm livid, and I sue you. And, you know, you're brazen enough to take it to court, um, you know, because typically you would settle out of court. Most copyright cases end out of court because going to court, you never know what will happen. So it's very rare unless you have a lot of money, then uh, you'll go to court. Um, but most of the time, you'll, you'll, you'll settle out of court. Now, all I can do, because I didn't register my copyright, is I can sue you for actual damages. You, 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 you know, essentially stole 10 mixtapes for me at 10 bucks a piece, I could sue you for 100 bucks, okay? That sucks. Uh, but here's the deal. I registered, say in another example, I registered the copyright on, on my, my trap mixtape. It's paid, it's paid the 35, 45 dollars, whatever it is now, you know, registered. I can sue you for a million and a half dollars because each mixtape you sold 
I can sue for statutory damages, which are 150 grand per infringement. You know, and number one, and then you try to make money off of it. So I could probably ask for a little bit more. Now, you're faced with 150, 100, $1.5 million lawsuit. You're probably not going to go to court and risk it, right? Because that'd be dumb. Unless you got a crazy entertainment law aunt who's a lawyer, you know, entertainment, entertainment aunt, <laughs> lawyer, <laughs> uh, you know, and she could defend the shit out of you in court. You're likely you're not going to test, you're not going to test it. Um, and um, in that instance, say, you know, I sue you for a mil and a half. You're like, oh, hell no, I don't, I don't have that. Uh, I go, well, what do you have? And you have, oh, you have $6,000 in your savings. Cool, I'll take that. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? That's if you registered your copyright. You can sue for statutory damages. If you don't register your copyright, you can sue for actual damages, which means the actual amount of harm that was done. But depending on how bad your infringing is, again, you could be looking at jail time. Um, five to 10 years, it's crazy. Um, but like I said, it's incredibly rare to actually go to court because unless you feel like you have a very good case as a defendant, that is you infringe, you sampled someone's beat, you know, chopped it up, you, you made art, appropriation art, whatever it is, unless you have a really good fair use case or a really good defense or, you know, the plaintiff has holes in their case and you got a good lawyer, you, you'll likely settle out of court. 